This is the regular meeting of the Rules Committee. We have a quorum. And um, let's see, we're going to have first citizens' comments. I need to sign in, Sheen. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, we started before Dar got here. I'm sorry. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, you ready? Okay. All right, um, we do have a quorum, and uh, we will begin with citizens' um, comments. Um, I will give you the first five names. Um, let's, let me encourage you that if someone has already said uh, pretty much what you're going to say, um, please um, give us that time, and um, don't repeat it. And everyone will have approximately three minutes, and we will be timing you because we do have a real full agenda tonight. So I have Reverend, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Ken Edwards, uh, Mr. Risky, John, uh, Janat Risky, Monte Adams, and Justin Hayes. And John, I think that's Car Carrillo. Those will be the first five. Go ahead. Please just state your name. Uh, my name is Ken Edwards. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor, Alderman. Uh, congratulations, new Alderman. Um, I work for Local 150, the Operating Engineers. We represent about 23,000 members, um, hundreds of whom live in Evanston. Um, people smarter than myself will get up here and, and uh, speak in detail about this turnaround agenda that you guys have on the agenda tonight. Um, we feel that this is nothing more than pure politics and pure politics belong in Springfield, not in local government. Um, that's where we'd rather have it uh, stay. We would ask that you guys either put it up and put it down or simply don't call it for a vote. This is um, not a good thing for the working class, not a good thing for the citizens of the state of Illinois. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Risky. Janad Risky. Um, I wasn't going to talk about this topic, but I will now because it's something I see a small parallel in my issues with Harley Clark. The small parallel is there was one bid submitted by basically a, a, a large um, hotel or a family that owns hotels, and basically, as I understand, those those hotel that that the that conglomerate or corporation in Chicago didn't allow basically was fighting with the unions. And they wanted now you want to put a hotel on our lakefront, of course. That's one of the, the things you're up to. But um, and I think it's very interesting how things somehow tie together here. Um, I am troubled by the Rules Committee. Many items that come to this committee seem to be they should be discussed at council. And they're, they're seeming to come in here to be hidden. And uh, the, I use the term hidden when I see a city council packet with 400 pages and memos that don't make any sense to add up. A lot of things here seem to be in, in chaos with how we do, do business here. And that really, did, the public is really at a, at a disadvantage when these things come out one day before and you expect me to look at 400 pages of information and I look at the staff memos, they don't add up to what's going on here. And this should be really at the council, all, several of these things, and as far as the library too, I don't see what they, any of these things have to do with rules. And this is, seems to be a practice here at this city, how things are being convoluted and the public doesn't know what's going on, and you suspend rules. So your suspension of the rules, I think, is a serious problem. You continue to do this so you can push things through quickly so the public can't have time to, to look at them even. And this is a, a common practice of this council. It's, it's not like this is an emergency to do half of these things. And I believe there's some serious problems here. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Monty Adams. I'm an Evanston resident here. 
Uh, I just want to tell you a personal story because I'm very pro-union for good reason. Uh, by the way, I'm not in a banker, uh, a biker gang. Uh, I'm going through chemo. That's why I got the bandana here. Uh, so I don't want to frighten anybody. Uh, a little bit of background. Uh, I served in the Air Force. I worked as a forensic scientist for the Chicago and Illinois State Police Departments. I also worked as an investigator and researcher for a law enforcement training company. Uh, and then I decided I wanted to go into teaching. I taught at ETHS. I taught at-risk students. And Mayor Tisdall was a great supporter for the program that I, spoke, uh, that I taught in the uh, academy. And uh, very worthwhile. Unfortunately, with budget cuts, I lost my job after four years and uh, had to move on to different schools. And finally, I ended up in a school that I really enjoy. It's a 20th, uh, 20, uh, 20, 20th and California in Chicago. Again, I work with at-risk students. It's an alternative school. Uh, during the interim, when I was unemployed, I was unemployed for one year. My wife was unemployed for two years. We struggled to pay our rent and to put food on the table. And during the first four years that I taught at this school, we did not have a union contract. We were fighting for a union contract for five years, and it got to the point where as much as I enjoyed doing that job, I was still doing three other part-time jobs in addition to my full-time teaching. Now. After five years of fighting with the school, we have an, uh, a contract that both the teachers and the administration is very happy with. I'm paid a lot more money. I have two master's degrees. I'm still not getting what I think I might be worth, like if I was at ETHS, but I'm very comfortable and happy with that. Now, the good thing about unions is that they help ensure that working people are able to take care of their families and their children. And not only that, but they're also help to make sure that the work environment is safe. I think if we do anything to break down the unions, we're harming the middle class. And I can tell you, I don't think the governor knows what it's like to be unemployed for two years or to have his wife unemployed. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Jason Hayes, live uh, in the 8th Ward, uh, member of Evanston Firefighters Local 742. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor, Alderman, City Council, and uh, welcome Mr. Miller. And uh, good luck and thank you for stepping up. And uh, you, got a, you got a lot of work ahead of you. Uh, on the docket this evening is a resolution to uh, address Governor Rauner's turnaround agenda. And I can only hope that this proposal is being addressed here rather than at a regular city council meeting uh, as an indicator that the governor's wrong-headed approach will be met with all the scorn and cynicism that it deserves. Uh, the governor's wasted much of his political capital in a war against labor. Working men and women are not the reason that this state's fiscal house is in disarray. A strong middle class is what drives our economy. And unions are the tide that raises all boats. Not some misguided trickle-down economic theory that leaves to nothing but a race to the bottom. The governor seems to cry for shared sacrifice, but it seems like it's left to the workers to do the heavy lifting. Now, the government, governor's empowerment zones are nothing short of illegal and designed to do nothing more than to give working men and women the right to work for less, less wages, less representation, less safety, less protections, and less equity. I'll keep this brief and ask this council to give this resolution all the due consideration, which is to say, none at all. Thank you. Um, Mr. John, I think it's Carrillo. Am I 
may not be pronouncing it correctly, C-A-R-R-I-G-L-I-O, not Joey Vale, Chris Kruger, Bridget Early, Scott Pringle, Spangle, I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Christopher Kruger, Madam Mayor, Alderman. I'm a 20-year Evanston resident and a 61-year Illinoisan. I rise in opposition to the governor's agenda. I do echo most of the comments made by my predecessor, so I'm going to go off my remarks and I'm, I'm going to say this. There's been a supply-side fallacy in our country for 40 years, and there's a pendulum shift. And when uh, Mitt Romney was most famously caught being videotaped, people heard, what people heard was his contempt for working Americans and contempt for poor people. But what they missed, here's what people missed when they heard Mitt Romney's comment, when he said 47% of the people can't vote for me. Because why? Because the anti-tax message, see we have to tax people to have roads, we have to tax people to have lights, we have to tax people to have a park district or a, or a school. And to do that, we have to tax people with money. And because of the anti-tax message, what Romney was saying is 40% of the people are so poor that there's no one left to tax. Okay? So that's what was missed. And we've gone to the bottom. We are at the bottom. Every mall that you're going to go to when you shop this weekend used to be a manufacturing plant. Dodge and Dempster was a steel mill. Oakton and, and uh, 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 Hartray was a Rust-Oleum plant. Howard and Hartree was Zenith, uh, Bell and Howell, Magnavox. Uh, Central and Tui was a teletype corporation. All those jobs are gone. And these gentlemen are the remnant of a great industrial class that we have that we deindustrialized. And the people who were supposed to create our jobs, they did create jobs. They created jobs in Mexico, in China, in Singapore. They created jobs everywhere except here. And now they're attacking the very last. The public employees are the last ones because public employment disproportionately benefits minorities and women and, and disadvantaged people because public entities actually try to obey the law. And I know a couple things about this because I happen to be an attorney. I happen to be an attorney with a labor and employment background. I happen to be a former employee of the National Labor Relations Movement. That's neither here nor there. This is rock bottom. And we can look to Wisconsin and see the result. We can look to Ohio. We can look to Indiana. And we can see both the social and economic results of this agenda. And we should condemn it. And furthermore, we should have a living wage in Evanston. And I applaud this uh, body for the, uh, the FEP program and for the program to promote legitimate women's business enterprises and legitimate minority business enterprises and Evanstonians. And that's what we should be doing. And my, uh, my little bite, uh, sound bite here is, instead of racing to the bottom, let's move on up. Let's move on up, folks. Thank you. Joy Vale, I just want to make sure we're not missing anyone. Joy Vale, um, Bridget Early, Good evening. My name is Bridget Early. I reside at 807 West Cornelia in Chicago. Uh, I am the political director for the Chicago Federation of Labor. As many of you know, the Chicago Federation of Labor represents over 500 unions who in turn represent over 500,000 working men and women who reside within Cook County, several of which live and work in this community. This evening, you are considering a, resolu a resolution that calls for Evanston to endorse aspects of the governor's turnaround agenda, an agenda which does little to improve the lives of working men and women throughout the state. As you are aware, the Illinois Municipal League is endorsing the governor's agenda as an answer to the financial woes that plague Illinois. 
As elected officials, it is imperative that you understand the consequences this agenda proposes for the men and women of your community. Governor Rauner has recommended policies that will drive down wages, increase the number of workplace fatalities, and ultimately decrease state and local tax revenues. The Illinois Economic Policy Institute, in conjunction with the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign School of Labor and Employment Relations, recently released a report titled The Impact of Local Right to Work Zones, Predicting Outcomes for Workers, the Economy, and Tax Revenues in Illinois. The report investigates the economic and policy impacts of adopting local right to work zones in Illinois, testing claims made by proponents of the ordinances. The report finds that worker incomes are lower in economy with right to work laws and that the employment effects are inconclusive. For instance, average worker wages are $2.90 per hour higher in Illinois than in right to work Indiana. At the same time, the unemployment rate in eastern Illinois counties was lower than in right-to-work counties across the Indiana border in December 2014. Ultimately, economic analysis reveals that local right-to-work laws would reduce worker earnings and decrease state and local tax revenues, which would result in a weaker Illinois economy. A January 2015 report of, out of Moody's Analytics states, since laws that hurt unions shift the balance of power from employees to owners, they tend to erode wages to lead to a more uneven distribution of the gains of economic growth. Data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows that the rate of workplace deaths is almost 53% higher in states with right to work laws. This resolution- Ms. Early, can you begin to wrap up? Yep. Three minutes is almost up. Okay, give me just a couple more minutes to make a few key points. Uh, the re resolution references prevailing wage as a burden. Subverting prevailing wage laws often leads to shoddy construction and substantial cost overruns, looking for more exploitable workforce rather than the best trained and best equipped crew to run jobs. It also deals with workers' comp reform. Uh, whereas we need to, uh, I'd like to point out a recent report that from the National Association, excuse me, Academy of Social Insurance, that workers' compensation remains the second most profitable line of insurance after auto insurance. What Illinois needs is more oversight and regulation of the insurance industry to bring about true change to the workers' comp system. Injured workers should not be forced to give up any further benefits that the insurance industry can profit. So to close, we understand that the governor's call for a 50% reduction in LGDF dollars puts an unfair burden on localities to provide the countless service to their residents at such high quality. But this resolution is not the answer. This resolution and the turnaround agenda pits working class worker versus working class worker against each other. And so voting in favor of the turnaround agenda is a vote against the workers, the teachers, the firefighters, the sanitation workers, and the men and women here in Evanston that make your community great and that have, you have been elected to represent. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Spangle. Good evening, Mrs. Mayor, Alderman. My name is Scott Spangle. I'm a proud union member for 43 years with the Plumbers Union. I'm a business representative for Chicago Journeyman Plumbers Local 130, and I'm here to speak out against Governor Rauner's turnaround agenda. There are many points that are brought up tonight. It's a very far-reaching agenda. One of the points that started to get covered was the prevailing wage and the PLAs. I mean, uh, you know, as part of PLAs, most of the time they are required to have apprentices on the job that are covered by the Department of Labor Bureau, Bureau of Training. There's drug testing. And I want to say in the study that Bridget Early mentioned from the University of Illinois, it was stated that if you took all the training programs for all the unions in the United States, it would equal the sixth largest university in the United States. That's how much training is done by the unions. And that all of that training is done by the private sector, not one 
penny of government dollars gets spent on that training. There are no guarantees with right to work, no prevailing wage, no PLAs. I urge this board not to adopt that agenda. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's Claudia Pontarella. Claudia Pontarella. Just sign up. Okay. Uh, Neil Marth. Okay. Uh, Frank, is it P U? Same note to sign up. Okay. Connor Joyce. Connor Joyce. Um, Jack Movin. Movini Hill. Yeah, okay, thank you. Patrick Keenan Devin. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. Congratulations, Mr. Miller. Uh, my name is Patrick Keenan Devlin. I live in the third ward at 616 Hinman Avenue, apartment three. Uh, I also have a cute baby. Um, <laughs> I, I rise in opposition to Resolution 46. R15. When I first heard the um, phrase right to work, I have to say my gut reaction was, who wants the right to work? I mean, I want the right to go on vacation. I want the right to sick days. I want the right to child care for my little girl. That's what I want. It's obviously not what Governor Rauner wants. He wants us to work for less. He wants to gut the middle class. And we here in Evanston are a progressive community that stand for the middle class and stand with the middle class. So I ask the Rules Committee tonight to send a message to Springfield that we oppose gutting uh, workers' comp, that we stand with our labor brothers and sisters. Uh, so vote no. Thanks so much. Thank you. Mike Sasa? Um, Benito Rivera, Rivera. Okay. Good evening. Uh, thank you for having us, uh, City of Evanston. Everyone representing it. Thank you. My name is Benito Rivera. I'm from uh, Laborers Local One. We've current. We've recently merged. We used to be Laborers Local One Eighteen. Um, a long-standing local that actually started in your prestigious city. Uh, we used to be located right here in Evanston, so this is an honor, and I, uh, I felt the urge to speak on our behalf. Um, the, the middle class is wounded, as everyone knows, in America, and um, pretty much the unions are one of the last crutches that the wounded middle class is leaning on. This is my son. I'm a single dad who's, please take your, son, your head off, son, out of respect. I apologize. I'm a single dad, and um, I'm able to take care of this young man because of the benefits negotiated on my behalf uh, by my unions representing me. Thank you. Um, my son recently came down with diabetes about a year and a half ago, and the medications that, that I have to get for him, pretty much they're almost like paying another house note if I were to have to come out of my own pocket with them. Um, if I were to have to do that without the benefits I currently enjoy, um, I might, ha I might be a little de more detrimental to society than I am right now, and I might just have to go on some sort of public assistance. I'm not the only person in these shoes. Um, again, I'm able to be contribute to my society, uh, in part because of the benefits I enjoy. Um, and all of you seem educated and well-to-do. Um, you know, I know you're public workers, so maybe not as well to do, as, but we appreciate, we appreciate what you do as well. You know, you represent the people. Thank you for that. Um, all I have to say is you never know what you're going to get as far as children or grandchildren. Um, 
I just urge you guys to to think moving forward, you know, some people might need more help than others. Um, so the decisions you guys make will affect future generations. Um, unions are a good thing. They, they negotiate on behalf of the worker. Without the negotiating power, some companies take advantage of people. There are, there, it's very rare to find a good company with a good-hearted person that will actually pay a worker what they're worth. We need unions. So please, I implore you, think of future generations. Um, you never know if it's going to be one of your descendants that might actually need these benefits. <clears throat> so please, on behalf of Laborers Local 1, and the rest of the unions, public and private, I implore you, please think about the things, the decisions you make, and please do not adopt this agenda moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. That's our last speaker. Um, the uh, next item on the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry, I see one light. Alderman Rainey? Yes. Madam Chair, I would like your permission to amend our agenda and have the first item of business, Resolution 46R15, Governor Rauner's wrong-headed <laughs> Illinois turnaround agenda. Second. <laughs> and I, wait, 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 wait. I, I have to say the key word. I would like to move that we not adopt it and send. <laughs> and uh, making certain that we send a copy of the video of this meeting to the governor and stand by the people in the audience tonight because they are us. You've heard the motion, is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Can we take a roll call for the governor? We sure can. Well, that, this is just the advancing to the, uh, just, this is the advancing on the agenda, right? No, I moved, I moved that we, she moved no, I just asked her permission to do that. I don't think we have to make a formal okay. thing about that. I couldn't hear the whole motion. Yeah. Uh, the mo the motion was to move it up on the agenda and also to vote. Well, I requested that you Right. So I am calling for a roll call vote so that we can also send that to the governor to let him know we each stand behind. Madam Mayor, point of, point of order. I just want to clarify what the motion is in a the sense. Motion, let for, me clarify it for you. Let me right. clarify it for you. The yes. motion is to not adopt Resolution 46R15, Governor Rauner's wrong-headed Illinois turnaround agenda. So the, so the <clears throat> correct vote would be a yes. <laughs> well, it depends on your point on of view. On the motion. To deny, to not adopt it. Right. The, the, I got it. The correct vote would be yes, we are not adopting it. Yes. Is that right. difficult? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, is that, uh, <coughs> oh, that's me. It's not you. Okay. But I need to turn that on the top. Right? Uh, oh, no, yes. No. Yes. See, Go ahead. <clears throat> Alderman Fisk. Aye. Alderman Braithwaite. Aye. Alderman Wynn. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Alderman Holmes. Aye. Wait, wait, wait. I get to vote in this. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go in that order. Okay. I'm sorry. Mayor Tista? Thank you. <laughs> yes. Alderman Tindum? Yes. Alderman Grover? Yes. Alderman Rainey? Yes. Alderman Miller? If I could take a moment, I'm proud to vote aye on this. It's my first vote on the council. <laughs> okay. Now back to our agenda. I need a motion to accept the minutes of the last regular meeting, which was actually December 1st, 2000. Move approval. Second. 
Thanks to everybody who came out. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Um, the next item is the revised automatic committee member chair schedule for 2013 through 2017. I move, uh, well, it, it has uh, Alderman Burris, of course, I'm, so we're going to. I'm just going to, no, I have, um, hold on just one second. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to give him time to get okay. out so that we could be able to hear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're just giving him a minute to clear the uh, chamber. Thank you. Okay, Alderman Rainey, I see your light. Madam Chair, I'm not sure what's revised about this. Okay. I mean, it, first of all, the memo is dated July 25th, 2013. Um, it refers to a schedule for 213 through 2017, but there's nothing revised about it. So. I'm sure everybody knows more than I do about this, but I'd like to know what the revision is. Madam Chair? Um, I'm sorry, um, Mr. Lyons. Uh, just, uh, I do believe at the, the time of um, producing this document, not the actual memo, we did not know who would be on the Rules Committee. So this is the most previous action, therefore you see um, Alderman Burris listed in every situation. So the, the uh, uh, purpose tonight is to discuss, uh, and that's how I think we did it two years ago, was to take a look at this. And is there any uh, request for changes or any uh, discussion on the part of the Rules Committee about who is going to be in which position for all of the other committees? Well, haven't we always, I mean, usually the, oh, I'm sorry, I see lots of lights, but I thought the procedure was to uh, substitute whoever came on for the committees that were already there. Otherwise, it's not the way we did it before. I see Alderman, and I'm not sure how they went on, but I see Alderman Grover, I believe it is. But, uh, Madam Chair, I, I was have a question, and I... Okay, I well, I'm, I see uh, Alderman Rainey. I know you don't have an answer yet. Yeah. Grover, it, and I see um, Breathway and Fisk. Is that... Wilson. Wilson and, and Breathway. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Nope. Go I, ahead, Alderman If Rainey. I recall, oh. hold on just one second, Alderman Breathway. Well, in terms of seniority, I mean that that would be the first thing we should do, I would think, to correct this in terms of seniority. Yep. So, Alderman Miller is new. He cannot take the place of Alderman Burris in terms of the um, the tenure of the the list is in tenure order. So he can't take her place because he's the new alderman. So he has to go to the bottom of the list. And, and that's not it's a negative a thing. It's just, no. yeah, no, it, it's it just is. The, the newest person on board is at the end of the list. So that would be the first thing we would have to do. And then discuss whether or not in the past newly seated aldermen did simply replace the all of uh, the appointed alderman has replaced That's in all special. ways the the alderman they repl they're replacing and I, I don't think that's been the case but that's the the thing i want to clarify is the order of seniority and that person goes to the bottom so we have to do that first well I, yeah i think we need to discuss seniority and and uh, alphabetical order because some of us end up chairing committees many many times and others haven't so i i have some issues with that but go ahead um I'll, i don't think we have an answer yet for you alderman rainey we'll have to discuss that but alderman grover uh, I'm just proposing that we send this schedule of chairpersonships back to staff to incorporate then Alderman Miller 
And I'd also like to hear from Alderman Braithwaite what he remembers of the process. Was it two, four years ago? Yeah, thank you, Alderman. Yeah. I was actually just going to bring up a couple of points that have already been mentioned. I think the first issue raised is uh, you look at it by seniority, but more importantly, and I don't know if, if, if Alderman Miller's had an opportunity to speak to the mayor about the various positions in the chairs. That was a lengthy discussion that we had. Uh, in, depending on what your passions are and, and the amount of time that you have to allocate, I think they should probably have that conversation and we should hold it over until our next committee meeting once they've looked at that and then we can reshuffle the deck from there would be my recommendation. Uh, okay, Alderman Wilson. What he said. I, <laughs> what? Alderman Miller feels strongly different. Uh, well, I think one of the things is not the difference between the chair and being on the committee because there are certain committees that have to be um, full with 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 the alderman, and then the chairmanship is a whole different thing. And I think that's what Alderman Rainey is referring to is the chairmanship in terms of seniority. Am I not correct? Well, in terms of the rotation, yes. Yes, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Alderman uh, Rainey and Alderman Miller. Alderman, oh, Miller. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to forget you. <laughs> Alderman Rainey and then Alderman Miller. Um, I, I know Alderman Braithwaite, you referred to the mayor discussing with Alderman Miller his placement on committees. <clears throat> but that is really not the mayor's job. That is the job of the Rules Committee. Um, we've, we've lightened the... No, no, if I could clarify, it's not the placement, it's whether which committee he chooses well, to I think serve he on. Should, I think the way it, it's always been done, and even before you got on and after right. you got on, we discuss it in the Rules Committee. That's one of the great reasons for the Rules Committee to exist, is so the aldermen on the Rules Committee, who are all of us, can vote to place aldermen on committees that they want to be on if there's an availability. And there's availability on several committees right now because of Alderman Burris is um, leaving us. Right. So again, I'll only speak to my experience, Alderman. I had an opportunity, not having a full understanding of all the committees, to have that conversation with the mayor and then choose which ones and also get educated at the same time. So I don't know if they've had that discussion. I am no idea, and I'm we're hoping we'll hear from Alderman Miller in a moment. And there might be senior aldermen here who would like to be replace her on some committees. I'm not sure of that. You're probably right. Well. I. <laughs> I don't want any of her committees. <laughs> because you serve on all the committees no, that I she serves on, with the exception of uh, human services. There's an opening now. <laughs> We would love to have you. Alderman <laughs> <laughs> Miller. In terms of the, the question of seniority for the chairmanships, I agree that, you know, according to the, the rules of organization and procedure, that it is based on seniority, so that definitely has to be revised. Um, I'm more than willing to serve on any and all committees for the, the council committees. As far as special committees, I'd like to discuss that further. Um, and. As far as human services, I was hoping, if I wasn't going to be appointed to that committee tonight, that I'd be able to actually ask a question of, regarding one of the items. So I'm willing to serve on human services if they're, everyone's willing to appoint that tonight. It sounds like no one else is willing to do that. And as far as the other vacancies, we can decide that at a later time. Well, there, are three, there are three standing committees, human services, uh, administration, public works, and planning and development. And rules, I'm sorry, four. But we all, everybody is on rules, so you have no choice about that. It sounds like I have no choice on human services, I which think I'm probably not. I'm willing to serve. I think Alderman That's Miller. I'd love to serve. So I think Alderman Miller services. is about to be um, appointed by acclamation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what about I, I, transportation and parking? Well, those come are, join us. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> with any of the committees. <laughs> Nothing wrong. It all comes down to time and where your passions line up exactly. Okay, so human services. As long as we're fair and everybody has a fair share of them because there are a lot of committees. Besides the standing committees, there are the other committees that have to be um, filled as well. So just let's all keep that in mind. It's economic development. <laughs> There's parking, there's everything. So we all have to think about that in terms of our time. And we all have other lives besides council, believe it or not. 
So the I believe the motion is to send this back to staff to um, incorporate um, Alderman Miller and to um, get that then back to us at the next rules committee meeting. Yes. Is that? Uh -huh. But we, we, we can put um, yes here. We can put him on human services tonight. I, I assume since he said he's comfortable with that. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. <coughs> All right. Um, we do need to add. <laughs> we do need an additional member on the uh, parking and the uh, transportation committee because I think we decided to add one more alderman to that committee. Is that correct? Um, because some of the committees have a uh, minimum of, of well, five and then some are seven or, or more. So, no, six or more, I should say. So, um, is there someone who wants to volunteer to be on parking? And, um, yes, uh, Alderman Rainey. Could you ask for self nominations? I mean, there might be people who really want to do it. And that's what I just did. Yeah. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Is that Miller? No, it's Alderman Tendum and Wynn. Tendum and Wynn. Alderman Tendum and then Alderman Wynn. I, just, I have a question. How many ultimately would we have on parking? Would there be four or three? Four. There are three. Three aldermen. But there will be four. There, there will be four, be four because it was on. at one more. Yes, we just okay. we just reconstituted the mean the the, the committee, <coughs> and it's really transportation and parking. Right. It's multimodal. If there's a fourth, I would certainly like to be considered. Okay. Um, I move Alderman Tenham gets to have that spot. Well, wait. Alderman Wynn wanted to him. speak as well, right? I think That's it? Yeah. Okay. No, my, I was just going to say that the, it's much more than parking now. I mean, it really is a multimodal, tra all forms of transportation. Okay. Uh, Alderman Miller? Uh, uh, deferring to seniority, I'm willing to serve as well. So if either the Alderman would like to serve, Great. If not, I'd be willing to serve. Okay, great. And I want to just explain to people because I know I'm bouncing back and forth, but it's only because I'm looking at the light so I can see who wants to speak. So I feel like I'm playing <laughs> volleyball or something up here. I should have probably moved. Um, okay, well, we, Alderman Tendum has volunteered, and based upon seniority, um, he would... He would be the person then assigned to uh, transportation and parking. Is that okay? Additional. The additional person for the fourth alderman on that committee. Okay. Um, it's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Uh, the next item would be the discussion of the library uh, district referendum um, referral uh, to rules. Alderman Grover. I move that we uh, accept the report. I'm looking for it. Excuse me, I'm sorry. There is no report. No. Okay. The memo. The memo. Mm -hmm. Don't do it, get it right. <clears throat> it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Did we do what? We accept the uh, memo and file. It's been moved and second that we will accept the memo and file. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right. Uh, the next is the uh, ref uh, resolution 23-R-15, requesting the president and Congress to memorialize Carl Sandburg National Historic Trail in Illinois. Move approval. Second. It's been moved and second. Seeing no lights, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, is there any new business? Get the mic. Get the mic. No new business? Okay. Then is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Wow. We are adjourned.